So how do you make something small look big? Creating the illusion of size with pin washes coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there, my name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If you're looking for ways to transform your plastic models into something that looks like you would find it on the rails today, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I put up a new video. So as we get started, what are some of your favorite ways of bringing out the details on your models? Please let me know in the comments section down below. If you haven't already done so, check out the first video in this series, which gives an overview of a process for weathering factory painted models. This video covers the fourth step of eight, and if you stick around to the end, you can connect with my other videos in this set. So now you've done your research, you've prepped your model, you've done the fading step, and even as you're getting a realistic feel to the surface of your model, it still feels small. One of the best ways to create the illusion of size is through the use of a wash. At its core, washes are very thin paints that are applied to a model to help with visual contrast. And this helps with the illusion of size. Now there are all kinds of different ways that one can do a wash. They can be pre-mixed, they can be homegrown. One of the more common washes is a mix of isopropyl alcohol and India ink. One can also use pre-made acrylic washes, especially when it comes to wood textures and when you're painting those tiny little figures but we'll get into that later. What I want to introduce today is a technique called a pin wash using oil-based paints. As with last week, this is a special technique intended to draw out the detail using the special properties of oil paints. Rather than slopping it all over the model, the wash is applied carefully in a targeted manner to draw out the details in a special way, and then the paint is feathered to blend it into the model. So first up, what will you need? Picking up from the previous video, the materials list is similar. A paint palette, odorless mineral spirits as a thinner, a small point brush, two flat brushes, and then oil paint or a pre-made enamel wash that is a good color match for the model. Of course, once you have this, you need to choose the right color of a wash for your model. The color of what you should use as a pin wash is a partly preference, but also it's a good idea not to overpower the color of your model. For this white Sioux car, I chose to use a neutral wash from the now defunct MIG Productions. I chose it because it's good for light colored vehicles, and for the caboose, I used a brown wash, and for the green Saskatchewan, one car, I chose a dark wash. I've had great luck in creating my own washes using Abtulung 502's Starship Filth from their Fantasy line. This color is so versatile in what it can be used for, I consider it an essential part of my painting arsenal. You can find a link for that in the description down below. While MIG Productions is no longer in business, AK Interactive, Ammo by MIG, and Tamiya all make enamel washes that will get the job done. And they're of the same type and they work in very similar ways. Next step, apply a clear coat. Prior to applying the wash, and then as mentioned in the previous video, make sure that you have applied an acrylic gloss clear coat to the model. This will allow for the oil or enamel washes to flow and collect where they need to, rather than soaking into the surface of the model as they would if you apply a matte coat. Airbrushing straight future floor polish works nicely for this. You can thin it with a bit of alcohol if you need to to keep the layers thin, but depending on your airbrush, you can spray it straight. Next is setting up your palette. Similar to the fading step, I usually like to have two wells on my palette filled with odorless thinner, one for washing brushes and one for blending or helping the washes go where they need to. If you're using an enamel wash, make sure the bottle is shaken very well and pour a small amount of it into one of the other wells. If you're setting up for an oil wash, fill up one of the wells with thinner and then add a very small amount of paint color that you want. Mix it thoroughly and test it for color. It needs to have enough pigment to do the job, but still flow like thinner. Now applying the wash, remember, this is not simply slopping it all over the model. You're wanting to do this in a targeted way. Pin washes get their name from the method of application. A general wash, such as one with India ink or pre-made acrylic washes, is usually applied across the whole model or a general area of the model with the larger modeling brush. A pin wash, on the other hand, is applied directly to the details such as rivets, walkways, hinges, grab irons, brake wheels, or the panel lines. In this case, a very small brush is used to apply the wash wash. All one needs to do is to get some of the wash on the brush and touch the edge of the detail where you want it to go. The properties of the oil or enamel wash then pulls the pigment into those corners and crevices through capillary action. This is why a gloss coat is so important. 
You want the paint to move towards these collection points rather than spreading across the surface of the model. If the wash isn't flowing quite as well as you like, sometimes it's a good idea to wet the surface of the model with some clean thinner. I usually do this, but only after I've tested it to see how well the wash is going to flow. Once you've applied the pin washes, let the model stand for about 20 to 30 minutes before moving on to the next step. After you've let the model sit, we now move on to the feathering step, and this is very important for completing the look. Similar to the dot fade technique, you might panic just a little bit after you've let the pin wash dry a bit. Tide marks of a partially dried wash look terrible, but trust me, you're not finished yet. Remember, these are oil-based and they take a while to dry, and this is where you can use the properties of it to your advantage. What we do now is remove the excess wash. Depending on the model, you can use a paper towel if it is a flat surface with lots of panel lines, and then use a pair of flat brushes to feather and blend the washes into the surface of the model. Use one brush that is lightly dampened with thinner, while the other brush should be kept completely dry. Keep a paper towel handy to wipe both of them off. Sometimes when doing this, the brush marks may become apparent. That means your dry brush is too wet or has picked up too much pigment. Just wipe off the dry brush on a paper towel as much as possible. Keep working at this until you're happy with the look of the pin washes. The lines resulting from this should be thin, but still enough to emphasize a detail point on the model. Once you've done this, now you let the model dry thoroughly. Usually 24 hours is a good idea. Pin washes give a nice size and depth to your models, and this is the point at which the model begins to look like something you would see on the railroad. Even if you don't do chipping, rust, or graffiti, I view this as one of the essential steps to weathering precisely because it creates the illusion of size. Even that scale trains unit that I have is going to get a pin wash. Check out the other videos in this series, and if you want to get the most out of your modeling and weathering projects, please click on subscribe and then that little bell icon so you can be notified of any future videos where I get into more and more detail. Thanks for watching, and may you keep on track.